Today marks a solemn anniversary for the people of Burma and for all of us around the world who spent years, literally years, rooting for them to make progress toward greater freedom and more stable democracy. Two years ago, their hopes of a stable democracy were wrenched away by a brutal military coup. To date, this takeover by the Tatmadaw, which is their army, has displaced 1.2 million people, including many thousands who've been forced to flee the country altogether. Inside Burma, more than 16,000 people have been taken as political prisoners. At one point, the military was detaining American journalist Danny Fenster and Nathan Ma, the Australian economist, Sean Turnow dozens of innocent children, and of course, my friend Aung San Suu Kyi, whose latest conviction in a sham trial leaves her facing the possibility of life in prison. Expert observers count the coup's death toll at 19,000. That includes people this illegitimate government simply executed outright, like the activists Ko Jimmy and Paro Zia Tall. Now the leaders of the Tatmadaw coup are laying out plans in broad daylight to stamp out Burma's pro-democracy movement once and for all. The military is shedding any, any last ounce of legitimacy it pretended to have and is now conducting airstrikes against innocent civilians. And the junta's new regulations for this year's election are designed to make viable opposition virtually impossible. No wonder the illegitimate Tatmadaw rulers ruled out, rolled out the red carpet for Putin's foreign minister to visit Burma. Thugs recognize other thugs. On the second anniversary of the coup with a potentially devastating sham election on the horizon, it is absolutely vital that the United States continue our assistance to the national unity government and other key groups working inside Burma to protect the innocent and advance the cause of democracy and increase cross-border humanitarian aid. By our example, America should rally our partners to raise the international stakes for the Tatmadaw's continued brutality. In December, the National Defense Authorization Act instructed the Biden administration to take several more concrete steps to bulk up American support for the people of Burma. It made sanctions on senior junta officials mandatory. It required more targeted and precisely timed sanctions against state-owned enterprises like MOGE, M-O-G-E. Finally, the NDAA also notably authorized funding for programs to strengthen federalism in and among ethnic states in Burma and for technical support and non-lethal assistance to Burma's ethnic armed organizations and People's Defense Forces to strengthen communication, command, and control, and coordination of international relief and other operations between and among those entities. So, Mr. President, the people of Burma are fighting for the sort of future that citizens of democracies like ours enjoy, the right to self-determination. I'm proud to stand behind them in this effort.